Without wasting your time, we are going to share Top 5 Best Compact Binoculars 2022. The product links are in the description and in first comment. The number 5 on the list is Vortex Optics Diamondback. Vortex Optics Diamondback, after using the for preseason, scouting and for both the mule, deer and elk seasons the binoculars have performed very well for me, including days when I got trapped in a thunderstorm and a day in the snow I have been carrying them with a binocular harness, so the lightweight ounces is hardly noticeable in the field and they are always easy to reach when needed. Yes, they come with a nice strap, but you can't use this strap to carry something else like your rangefinder if you are serious about carrying binoculars in the field especially for hunting you need also like the rubber armor coating which gives the binoculars a quality feel but also helps hold both the objective and ocular lens covers in place for protection but quickly allows me to pop them off when needed. I also like that rubber armor because it helps to soften the sound when I am not careful enough and let the rangefinder bump into the binoculars. I also like the fact that they focus quickly and smoothly and that right eye diopter adjustment stays where I put it so I can customize them for my eyes as I use the binoculars with my glasses on when quickly looking at birds or wildlife, but also use them without my glasses when scanning the sky for raptors or scanning the opposite hillside for deer or elk and the diamondbacks have precise, adjustable multi-position, eye cups and enough eye relief to make that possible. The Vortex Diamondbacks are a roof prism design that is lightweight and has a very sturdy feel to the focus wheel and to the hinge. For the price the diamonds backs provide good resolution in low light conditions comparable to other binoculars that cost more one complaint that is commonly expressed in binocular reviews is about chromatic aberrations or that the image is not in sharp focus along the outer edge of the field of view. I don't notice any color distortions with the diamond backs and can only notice the unfocused edge if I concentrate on it. For most the unclear edge only comes into play when using a tripod or window mount. If the target moves away from the center of view and the binoculars aren't adjusted to follow, you will notice it. My advice is not to spend another dollars to fix that problem, just don't look at the edges, there is plenty of area where the image is in sharp focus. The Vortex Diamondbacks also has a tripod adapter so they could be mounted on a tripod or a window mount, but I have not used that feature yet. That is what I use as spotting scopes for another plus for the Vortex Binoculars brand is the molded hard case that comes with the binoculars for protection. When not in use one of my worst habits is to throw the binoculars on the truck seat when I get back to civilization so far the Diamondbacks have held up to this abuse, but I am trying to break this old habit and put them in the case that is provided. The number 4 on the list is Celestron Nature DX. Celestron Nature DX, we've met many people who want to dip their toes in the birdwatching pool but don't want to invest a pile of money in a super nice pair of binoculars. If you fit into this category, we present the Celestron Nature. These binoculars provide a great birdwatching experience at a bargain price treating you to an impressively sharp, image fast and easy, focus adjustment and comfort in hand. However, we are not saying these bins are magical. They do have some drawbacks compared to higher priced models, namely, poor performance in low light conditions, some lack of clarity at the edge of an image, and lower quality materials. If your birdwatching interest eventually becomes a passion, you will likely want to upgrade to a better model. What these binos can do is provide enough performance for you to make out the subtle features of birds enjoy learning your warblers and generally have a good experience as you try your hand at a new hobby without requiring a huge investment. The downside of the Nature DX clarity when compared to more expensive models is the image gets a bit blurrier the farther away you move from the center you can see in the image below that most of the branches are in focus in the competitor image but the ones towards the edge of the Nature DX image are blurrier you can't really tell this from a still photo but that edge blurriness makes the image feel less immersive. It's the difference between feeling like you're actually sitting right next to the birds versus feeling like you're looking at a picture of the bird. That feeling of immersion is the main advantage you get from spending more on a higher quality pair of bins, but the Nature DX still provides a good birding experience. Here again the Nature DX impressed us by staying within spitting distance of the higher end models in bright light 
we honestly had some trouble telling the difference between the Nature DX and other higher priced models in terms of brightness in these situations, the Nature DX produced exceptionally bright images, we really love the Nature DX focus knob, which is supple and smooth yet solidly locks in place once you stop moving it, one of the biggest frustrations for new birders is learning to quickly get their bins focused on a bird before it decides to flit away, and the Nature DX focus knob is great for learning that skill. The eye cups are also easy to adjust and have three settings where they solidly lock and place more than three options could be nice, but none of our testers felt this kept them from getting a good image. The only adjustment that is a bit finicky is the diopter which is adjusted with a separate knob that is quite stiff. This does make minor adjustments a bit difficult, but this is something you'll only have to adjust once when you first get the binoculars and then maybe again every few months as you jostle the binoculars around and knock things loose. The number three on the list is Leica Ultravid BR. Leica Ultravid BR for compact binoculars is pretty pricey at least to me. I therefore had high expectations for these overall I've been pretty happy with the quality of the lenses I'm still not convinced it's worth the premium over similar less expensive binoculars from mid-grade competitors, but no doubt these are nice I can attest that they are not that durable, though my wife unfortunately dropped these from about feet high and it misallened the tubes so you see double when you look through them no big deal though, these come with a lifetime warranty and an additional year warranty against accidental damage like this, I guess that's one of the perks you get for paying this kind of price premium. I sent these into Leica and waited waited some more and continued to wait. Finally I got a bill in the mail for, for the repair it took phone calls and a very extended hold time to even get a hold of someone who could give me a status on my repair and sort out the mistake of sending me a bill for what should be covered by the accidental damage warranty. They asked for copies of my receipt and warranty card to verify that the product is indeed still under warranty. I had included copies of all of that in the box I mailed them, but apparently they paid no attention to any of the enclosed documentation I sent so anyway I emailed over another set of copies to them since the lost what I had originally sent after receiving the email documentation, I was told the binoculars would ship back to me in days. At this point it had been weeks since I mailed in the binoculars. It also is worth mentioning that it took phone calls and a very extended hold time to even get a hold of someone who could give me a status on my order. After waiting another weeks, the binoculars have not showed up I called and left a voicemail for the person who handles repairs status and asked what s going on nobody called back, as usual I called again and talked to a live person who explained that my repair is scheduled to ship out in about seriously is this a joke I explained that I had already waited two months and was told this would ship back to me weeks ago, a month turnaround for warranty, repair is insane the rep said he'd check on this and give me a call back tomorrow I'm betting nobody will call back based on prior interactions we'll see. So bottom line Leica has the most abysmal warranty service I've ever dealt with it's below that of most any other China crap optics manufacturer. This is what you get for paying top dollar for a product with a supposed lifetime warranty. Never again I'll go with another brand next time update they did call back and finally got things squared away the bottom line is Leica's warranty service sucks. You certainly don't get what you pay for in that regard, now that they work again I really do like these binoculars though the durability is suspect though considering how they got Miss Allen from a very small fall probably the best compact binoculars, but with some compromise, tested this model against the Trinovid, dismissing the Trinovids was easy as it was very obvious, right away they did have a lower sharpness and subdued color. They were lighter and felt a bit flimsy too. The Swarovski was a different story, very sharp nice contrast, but they are ounces heavier, a bit thicker, and I dislike the diopter adjustment wheel. The eye cups are better designed and found the pouch rain cover and strap a better deal than with the Leica so why the Leica Ultravid, weight overall size and better, controls as far as optics, I barely can tell the difference. To my eyes the Ultravids seem to have a more pleasant blur, they supply an eye cup cover, set which the Swaros don't. Both models don't come with front lens covers. The number two on the list is Swarovski. Swarovski so I purchased several hundred dollars worth of this jewelry at a party my friend hosted. Was told by the sales rep that the jewelry doesn't tarnish and has a lifetime warranty. Wore the bracelet I purchased maybe 10 times total over the next several weeks and it tarnished. 
I reached out to the sales rep, who said I would have to to have it, replaced sorry, but how, is that a warranty this was just, a few weeks later overpriced junk, is what this jewelry is. I reached out to customer service and no reply to date.bad customer service. It was my colleague's birthday, and I placed a order online. They promised delivery, same day I got the delivery, next day when birthday was over moreover the birthday message and card was missing the next day they gave me a voucher code, but that didn't work either, while purchasing other product, online all their customer service only promised to call, but never call back I am tired of it being a regular customer, you get such service not acceptable pathetic service. Not buying anything hereafter and highly not recommended. Might as well buy pure gold then, buying Swarovski highly have, been a huge fan of Swarovski, for many years I have purchased their jewelry for myself, and as birthday and Christmas, gift to my sister for years. The quality is certainly suffering. The crystals lose their sparkle, pretty quickly the silver tarnishes, and the crystals occasionally fall out, of the items I have purchased, many assorted rings earring, bracelets and watches. I recently bought the Dexterra hoop, earrings octagonal full pave, medium white rhodium fur, the sales lady sold me on them, because she said they would not fall out of my ears even, if anyone hugged me or if they touched my clothing. True both bracelets got loss, of my wrist just lost my second, bracelet today called the store, to see if there is a warranty, and she told me only to replace crystals, when I bought the bracelet the second I was told I could get another one if I should lose it again these bracelets are rose gold with crystals going around it, you have to release the button for the bracelets to detach from your wrist, this product should not be sold, it's no way it keep coming detach from my wrist I wished I had read the reviews on Swarovski. My friend asked me where did I want a watch from and I chose Swarovski because of their beautiful watches. I chose the watch January 2, weeks later as I was putting on the watch it fell to the ground, smashing the face this type of damage isn't covered by their warranty and I was told to bring it to one of their repair facilities all which are one hour away from my home so many companies include this type of damage in their warranty and supply a prepaid label to return the item this is terrible customer service I will never purchase any items from their company in the future Swarovski should realize people do have choices to purchase their jewelry from so many other companies with much better warranties and customer service. My mother purchased just a Swarovski bracelet which I wear only for special occasions many crystals fell out despite minimal wear first time I had it repaired under warranty. Same issue again not long after, I contacted them only to now be told that they no longer repair their damaged items I now have a damaged bracket with missing crystals that can't be worn I will never buy from this company again. The number one on the list is Vortex Optics Viper. Vortex Optics this is Viper. The Viper, we did our research prior the Viper to purchasing HD these Vortex is a Viper we needed something specifically for bird watching for and so hunt. set out to obtain An the HD opinions of some of the most experienced birders we could find online clarity. of course the big name brands XR, are always listed at the top however the Viper HD kept popping up in the suggestions we were receiving. A we also right came across a list of binocular reviews that listed various top-end the models, their prices and the rating percentage for each model. Control, On that list the top of the line, big-name models were set up, the curve at around the Viper HDs showed up slightly lower protection. down the list at around, but also cost as long less, as you we decided to, to purchase these, High and they are now our second pair of what I'll call mid-level, binoculars are previous pair of being, a rather bulky set of easy decent Steiner, hunting binos that are not really optimized for birding, interestingly the Viper weighs similarly, but are far less bulky, glass in any event we've had these for a few months now, and, and have used them locally, the though we've not had the opportunity to put them through the rigorous jungle, stomping mountain climbing, dust moisture vibration heavy, trials that the Steiners survive. However with the use we've given them it seems more than promising that they'll hold up comparably. The build quality seems top-notch they're solid, well-designed machined and constructed. Nothing is loose and everything, feels like optics made in Japan, feel like superb engineering. As I mentioned this is only our second pair of, but I didn't think it was technically possible for something seen through a pair of binoculars to actually appear brighter sharper and more colorful than through the naked eye, but that's how it every time we use these. Acquisition of targets is quick smooth and flawless, with the central focus knob being smooth and precise. Tracking moving targets is a breeze compared to the individual focus adjustments required for each lens on the Steiners. 
When exposed to the humidity of the jungle we live in, the vipers fog up externally, as do all of our top-end optics in this climate, but the viper seemed to acclimate and unfog more rapidly than the others I'm certain. They're sealed adequately against internal moisture as they claim to be waterproof, and the build quality supports this I'd list some cons here, but so far, I haven't found any of note. The price is slightly higher than others in its price range, but I firmly believe the quality difference is worth it in short, our research suggested that these are top-end binos in an upper mid-range price bracket, and though we haven't yet subjected them to the abuse that I would concur with that assessment my opinion is, if you're looking in the mid-range, it's worth paying a bit more for the Viper and getting a big jump in quality if you're looking in the low end of the top range, it seems you could save some money and he hadn't heard much of Vortex Optics the name is completely overshadowed by the Celestron Bushnell Bausch Lom, the mass market big three, Lupold Minox Nike and this Wierowski like and Zeiss the top end big three. Of course there are top of the line models from each maker that are for different purposes, but surprisingly and very refreshingly this Vortex Diamondback has a bright clear picture and pretty decent field of view. It's not quite as bright as that Celestron granite that I have, but it's pretty darn impressive. Even my Minox are just big, hulking, clunking somewhat dark, and restricted it's by comparison. This Binox also has a rubberized body and comfortable grip, with thumb and finger grips making it relatively slip-free. I haven't tried out its claim. As to being tough against drops, bumps and bruises or waterproof claims and I hope not to. The zoom is smooth, and the eye relief cups are wonderful, there's no parallax or blackout if properly adjusted now, sadly, the downsides to this particular model the lens protection, cups don't quite fit right, they kind of slide off the binox on their own, but that's minor. The neck strap really is amateurish looking, but that's easily replaced with a visit to an optics shop. But the most glaring deficiency is the case it's terrible, it's like a zippered clamshell case that would be provided with a set of inexpensive eye or sunglasses. When you put the binox in it and zip them up, they clang and clank around inside this clamshell case because it's not molded to the binox the case is just way too big to even be comfortable in your hands, you have to have a small towel or something to take up the extra space inside and kind of awkward. It has strap rings.